And hello, people. This is your host, Iridium Axel here, and welcome to my five tips to improve your YouTube channel. Now, before this begins, I want to explain that though I am at a meager size of 76 subscribers, I got there by doubling my subscriber amount after applying these tips, and that double came within about two weeks. So, that's an idea of how fast this can grow your YouTube channel. Some of these things you might already know about, you might already already know about all of them. But this is very important to note when starting a YouTube channel and continuing through it. So let's start off at number one. Kicking it off, what we have here is equipment. So for equipment, that means whether you're doing live action skits, vlogs, commentaries, podcasts, whatever. You have to have the right equipment when you start. Now that doesn't mean if you're going to be recording vlogs, you need to go out and buy a $1,000 camera and a $250 Rode video mic. That's just not the case. What you do need to do though, is make sure you have a good enough camera and good enough audio. Because the audio and video is the most important part. If you have really pixelated 240p video, but a nice smooth buttery microphone, then you still aren't going to get that many views. But if you have a wretched microphone, but a fancy $1,000 4K camera, still, no one's going to watch the video. So what that means is you have to find an equal medium. You can find good microphones for $40 made by different companies. Some companies I would recommend is CAD and MXL. Those both make incredible microphones. So I recommend you definitely get a good enough microphone before you start. And for like vlogs and stuff, go ahead and get a good enough video camera, like the Canon Vixia HR. HR5, I think, records 1080p 60fps video. That's something that could be really helpful just to start out. So, uh, I guess we can move on to the next thing, so long as you know you need good equipment. On to number two. So, to beat a dead horse, personality. Personality is extremely important when recording your videos, whether you put on a personality or just be yourself. Now, with a lot of things, it's best to just be yourself, because if you get too relaxed, you're going to drift out of that personality, and that's just never good. But if you have something with a lot of cuts, and you need to stay in character, of course, make sure you put on that personality. Now, I could talk tons of different ways if I wanted to. I mainly put on more of a radio type voice when I'm recording, and I talk regularly like this, it's it's a bit different, but not completely. Uh, but anyway, what you need to do is uh, remember, be yourself or put on the appropriate, uh, the appropriate personality. Never try and uh, just act like a Russian throughout an entire video. Now, that's not to say anything against Russians, of course. I'm just saying if you're going to be putting on a personality, do it specifically for the type of video you're making. For a commentary, you might change your voice a little, like I do, but don't just completely overboard it. Like, talk like this, you do not try to be Russian. No. So, yeah, just remember, personality, extremely important. If you aren't acting like yourself, people will notice. People are smarter than, well, and than a stone. So, important to keep in mind. So, I guess we can move on to number three. Oh, thumbnails, 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 thumbnails. Thumbnails are one of the most important things you can have on your videos. While some people don't use them and they're still successful, such as Ethos Lab, it is statistic, uh, it's statistics that good thumbnails, you're going to get more reaction from people to click on it. Uh, it just, it stimulates the mind more, it intrigues them, rather than just having an image from the video. If it was just you with a thumbs up, smiling, that could possibly get viewers. But it won't get as many as something where you, like, you could take that image, add on to it, add text. Make sure people know what it is that they are clicking on, 
so that it will pique their interest and they want to see more. So if you're going to make a thumbnail, I'm going to have a tutorial for this up soon if it's not already. If you're going to make a thumbnail, make sure you use lots of bright colors and uh, theme it appropriately for the video, of course. Uh, it's very important that you do all of these things so that you get it nice, efficient, and like I said before, over and over, beating a horse to death, you have to make it intriguing to the human mind. If you look at that thumbnail and you think, if I saw that, I would probably watch the video, that probably means it's good enough. And just experiment with it and you'll find things that work for you. And on to number four? Yes, I think number four. Now, this is something that you have to do pretty much no matter what. Uh, you have to stay consistent with all of your videos. Now, that doesn't mean if you are physically limited by the amount of videos you can make due to personal circumstances. That doesn't mean that you still have to push out a video every day. But make sure that you are at least semi-consistent. If you have a project that takes one month to create each episode, make sure that you schedule it for a particular day. That way, once someone is done watching the video, they know when to expect the next one, and they will come back to your channel and watch the next one. Whereas, they could easily miss a video if they've been waiting over a month, it shows up in their subscription box, but they don't see it, and they just go about your day. I mean, their day, sorry. If that happens, over the period of time when you don't upload and people don't watch your videos, it starts to appear in subscription boxes less. Uh, and that's such a stupid YouTube subscription box mechanic, but it does it anyway. So you have to make sure that if you have something like that, it's going to be on a schedule. That's extremely important. Am I being a hypocrite in saying this? Yes, absolutely. I'm almost never consistent, but as I said before, that's due to personal circumstances where I can't record all the time. Uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to record more soon, but that's just... It's in the air, and I haven't had a chance to yet. But anyway, I think you get the point with consistency. Stay consistent, and your viewership will grow. Uh, Alright now, let's move on to the final one, number five. And for number five, what we have here is one of the most important things for working on YouTube. And that is originality, something that many people lack. This is especially important for commentary videos because they all seem to be close to the same. So try something different. If you haven't seen something before on YouTube, then try it out because chances are uh, anything original that you do is going to be viewed more than things that you've done before, everyone's done before. Like Minecraft Let's Plays, everyone and their grandmother has seen at least a few of those, and they're all basically the same. If you're going to make one, try and add a little spice to it, add a few mods, maybe have certain rules for yourself so that you can only do it a certain way. But no matter what you do, make it original. Uh, this is one of the most important things you can do. Like, something I noticed in the analytics section of my YouTube page, especially when I first started up, whenever I would upload something original, it would get much more viewed than anything else I uploaded. That's probably because my Let's Plays were quite generic when I first started off. I wasn't quite sure what I was doing, and that just dragged, uh, dragged down my YouTube channel. So pretty much try and be original. Anyway, that's going to be the five tips that I have for you on your YouTube page. If you hear a dog, I'm sorry, she will not be quiet. Anyway, I'm going to give you guys my closing thoughts, and that's going to be about it. So, for my closing thoughts, I figure I should tell you about a few things that I do other than the, just the tips that might help you out. First of all, check your YouTube analytics regularly. That's quite important so that you can see what people like, what they don't like, and the main demographic you should be targeting. Uh, and, like, that sort of stuff gets jumbled up because you have a target demographic and then the demographic you're getting. That might not always be the same, so just try and aim for what you want. 
Ah, make sure that you have good, nice looking channel art and channel logo, not just the plain leave it how it is because that looks hideous and nobody thinks you're really going into this if you leave it as the default. Uh, a lot of people just don't really like that and it doesn't attract many viewers. Other things that you can do range from audio reverb protection. The room I'm recording in has hardly any reverb as the walls, uh, like, there's closets and clothes and stuff like that, so, uh, the audio can't really bounce off the walls back to the microphone. That's mainly what causes reverb. Also, when editing audio, edit out any filler words like, um, because I've said that a few times already, and I know I've said it, and it just, it, it's not as good. Ah. Out of air. <laughs> anyway, if you like this video, please like it, because that does give me a slight ego boost whenever that happens. And also, if you, uh, if you have further thoughts on the subject material, please leave me a comment saying what you liked about it, or, uh, what you didn't like about it, or what you thought I said wrong, so that I can correct you and say that I, in fact, said everything right. Uh, sarcasm, please do not take that as truth. Anyway, thanks a ton for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye And hello, people, this is your host, Iridium Axel here, and welcome to Windows 10. Windows 10 is the newest version of Windows 1.